So hi, Danae. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, thank you so, so much for joining us. Uh, well, joining me, actually. There's only me here. Um, so we are running another Body Stories campaign. Um, I can't quite believe they've managed yet again um, for me to take my kit off. <laughs> but um, I think it's a really important um, campaign. And what we're trying to do this time is show people how different you can look with these kind of body tuning apps that you can get. Um, so we're hoping to show the before and then the after. Um, so I want to talk to you because your social media accounts are, you know, you're just so honest about everything, which I absolutely love. You, you show exactly how you can pose to make yourself look better. Um, and then you equally pose how you really look. And I think that's so refreshing. Thank you. I, I believe in it pretty strongly. I think maybe for the same reason you guys are, are doing the body campaign. It's, it's just to help other women feel a little bit better. Yeah. I mean, did you do this? Um, how did you get into posting it? I mean, you're saying it's to make people mm -hmm. feel better, but it, was it for, was it just for you or was it to, for you to speak up and show people the difference between Instagram and, and real life, for instance? I guess a mix of both, if I'm honest. So I, I have a background of working in media. I've been a journalist for over 10 years now, and I've worked in magazines. And as part of that, I would often be behind the scenes at photo shoots. And I saw a lot of what went into photo shoots, whether it was the, the posing, the lighting, the retouching, all the things that are involved. So that was part of it. And then the other part was I had an eating disorder when I was 19 and I went through my own period of, of really struggling with my body and, and struggling with my body image. And I would say social media, things like Tumblr at the time really fed into my sickness and feeling really awful about myself and kind of escalated things. So the combined, these two elements combined kind of took me to a place where I wanted just, I guess, to, to pull back the curtain and show a little bit more of like, what's real. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when we did it the first time round, we were kind of worried about what the reaction would be and whether we'd get trolls going, oh yeah, you are really fat or you're really old. And But actually the response was amazing. And we got loads of um, really positive feedback and people celebrating you know, themselves and, and their bodies. What's been the feedback like for you? Well, I would say exactly like that. I mean, there are trolls and that's, I think, part of just being a woman on the internet or a woman in the public eye. There's always going to be someone who will try to tear you down and it's, it's pretty awful. But overwhelmingly, I would say like 99% has been this really beautiful support from other women, other girls, or even parents other people just saying like, oh, I, I thought I was alone in that. And I realized I'm not like, I thought I was the only one who had, I've got a lot of cellulite on my thighs, on my hips. And so it's like, oh, I, I thought I was the only one with hips that look like that. I never saw hips that look like that. I'm not alone. This helps me so much. And for me, honestly, that's, it's like a beautiful cycle because then it makes me feel less alone and less ashamed. And then I can talk about it more. And then it's this it's kind of like we're working together in this in this like healing journey mm, yeah no it's brilliant i've seen so many of your um youtube videos and stuff and instagram posts and they're really encouraging and like i said i just love your your honesty i mean um for this campaign we had a go at editing our own images on one of the apps that you can use on instagram but it was really strange because i know for me personally um i actually for the first time ever thought I don't know whether I want to edit it. I, you know, I felt okay about myself. And I think that's the first time that's happened and probably because of the first campaign we did, because it is about learning to, to love yourself, isn't it? And see the, see all the good points instead of focusing on all the things you don't like, I guess. Well, it's so, it's so interesting you say that because this morning I was talking about there are these Instagram accounts that take pictures of celebrities and they Photoshop them. So like um, Anna, Anna, what's her last name? Joy, the, the young woman from the Queen's Gambit or Anne Hathaway or any, any celebrity. 
and they will just take their regular Getty images and they Photoshop them and make them look like what we see on Instagram. So no pores, like perfect skin, perfect makeup, perfect everything. And I was talking about it this morning and the horrifying thing is when you put these images side by side, there's it's almost like you want to be like, no, not the edited one, not the edited one, because what we love is what makes these people, these actresses, these celebrities unique. So by stripping that away, it, it it loses something almost. And I, maybe that's where you are with, you said you, you didn't want to edit your body. Maybe you're at that point where you're like, oh no, this is, this is me. And that's okay. That's beautiful. But do you think that's probably because also I'm older now as well, you know, I'm 56. So do you think that's why it's been more important for us to get the message out there for the younger generation who are still insecure about themselves? I probably wouldn't have felt like this at 26. Um, do you think it's more important then that we focus on, you know, making sure the younger, male and female actually, because it's just as hard for guys, I think, and, and maybe focus on them more? Or should we, do you think we should add a hashtag edited photo when we've done it oh great questions well I think as we get older I mean I'm 34 now and I feel like my 30s have been amazing and I can't wait for 40 and 50 if if 30 is anything to go by so I feel like finally I know more of who I am I know what I believe I know what I want like it's kind of a lot of that faff and nonsense disappears so I I do think for a lot of people as we get older we figure out who we are a bit more but I also think I mean so many of our generations and and older and younger have been fed a very certain image of beauty and a lot of us are still fighting against that Mm -hmm. and with like what you're saying with these these apps like it's I filmed a video this morning I haven't posted it yet but it's it's going to be about I saw um, there's a lot of like crash detox ads at the moment And there's one that's like, watch me lose 10 kg in two weeks, which is not what you should be doing. And the girl was, you know, I could recreate that just through posing. And then at the end, I used an app for like an extreme effect. But these apps are so subtle. They can change your body in video in a really subtle way. And that's messing with, I would say it's massively messing with the younger generation's minds because the, we can't we can't spot it in video we just see like oh why is her waist so tiny why are her like tata so perky and her hips so curvy my body doesn't look like that like why is she look and and if you see a thousand of those images I think that starts to really play on how you see what how you view what you see in the mirror mm, yeah but I mean equally I guess you know for me I wouldn't you know, I think we all want to look nice, don't we? You know, if we're going to post yeah. for a picture, we want to look nice because we're going to hang that picture in our house or see it in a magazine. We want it to look nice. But I think there's a way of naturally looking nice. So you've got nice makeup on or you've done, you know, I've been done today for, for Loose Women by the makeup team and the hair team. And you go, oh, I don't look like <laughs> this when I wake up in the morning. Um, so I don't think there's anything, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I want to say to people, listen, you should. always be yourself. You're having a photo, don't put makeup on. I think there's nothing making the best of what you've got, basically. Well, I think, yeah, I agree. I think I get asked a lot, like, do I think people should never pose? Or do I think every single filter is evil and we should never, ever use filters? I'm like, but, but no. Like, at the end of the day, we all choose to express ourselves in different ways and say, you know, like, I think of one of my best friends who's a mom and her body has changed considerably over the last five years. And say she watched a video on posing and she goes to the beach and she poses and she like pops her little booty out and like (laughs) sticks an arm up and takes these photos and she looks at them and she is like, yes, I feel amazing. I feel strong. I feel great. That is so empowering and so incredible. The same with hair and makeup, the same with like the different ways we choose to express ourselves, I think at different stages that can be art or empowering or make us feel really great. I just think on the flip side, like I would also hope that that friend, maybe she's standing normally and her children are with her and she's laughing and she's happy and 
she can take that photo as well and look at it and be like, yes, I also love this. Like, I love who I am in that moment too. And that's how I feel about filters, you know? Yeah. And I think you're right. I think it is more about starting to love yourself more and not really, not really caring what other people's thoughts are of you, you know, because everybody's a critic, aren't they? And I think women... (laughs) actually are the worst critics about other women actually you know a lot of the trolls I get are actually from women you know um so I think once you love yourself then that should be enough we shouldn't be trying to aesthetically please other people I yeah I think figuring out what feels like us for us is one of the most beautiful powerful things and it's hard because I think as especially as women we're taught to want to fit in to want to keep everyone happy to want to like be part of the group but if it's like if you if you listen to every single opinion you will never like there's this inside that you know what's right and what's right for you and it's really important to tap into that I totally agree yeah yeah and should we get better do you think of um accepting compliments you know when somebody goes you've got gorgeous eyes I'm terrible at accepting compliments you know someone will go oh, your hair's lovely. And I'll go, yeah, shame about my waist or, you know, oh, thank you. (laughs) Or on the flip side, right? Have you noticed groups of women when we're together, we will often start to tear ourselves down as a bonding activity. So it'll be like, oh, you know, I'm just so disgusting. I'm so lazy. I'm really bad. And then you'll like kind of wait for the other woman to say something horrible about herself too. And it's like, the uh, yeah, I, these are definitely things I think we, we should push back against. Yeah, we need to train ourselves to, to act mm. better around. <laughs> slowly, you, slowly. <laughs> you've got so many followers um, now, um, rightly so. Uh, what's been one of the best, um, you know, what's been one of the best comments that you've had from somebody? Well, I think as someone who hopefully one day will have children, I... I find it really powerful when I receive messages from parents with young children. I've had one from a dad with a six-year-old daughter and a mom with a nine-year-old daughter, two separate messages, but both of them basically said they sat with their daughters for over an hour, kind of scrolling through my page, talking about angles, filters, cameras, lighting, bodies, and using it as a tool to, to discuss what we see isn't real, but also bodies come in different shapes and sizes. And I think those messages really mean a lot to me because we see eating disorders and body image issues starting younger and younger. So if I can help balance that, even in a small way, I think it's all worth it. Yeah. So do you feel that, you know, if you're only, if you're only helping a handful of people, then it's worth doing what you're doing? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's why like anyone who's watching, I think if you're at a place where you feel strong enough and you have your own story to share, I think it's so worth sharing because all the time I get messages about like, oh, can you talk about this? Or, oh, what about this thing? Things that maybe I don't have, I don't struggle with. That's not my story, but I guarantee you there's like another woman or a handful of women who need to hear it. And you could, you could help change their kind of how they feel about themselves. Yeah. Well, Danae, keep doing what you're doing because I think you are fabulous and you are exactly what we now need online and to listen to. And thank you so, so much for talking to me today. And you are absolutely beautiful. (laughs) Thank you. I'm I'm a little sweaty under all these lights. (laughs) You see, you're doing that thing. Oh, I did not. You're just beautiful. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. (laughs)